Okay, good morning. So uh, today I'm going to explain the second lab sheet, which will be uh, the virtual network. So essentially <coughs> this is pretty much the most complicated and most important lab sheet of the module itself, because uh, in this lab sheet we will build the entire network of virtual machines that we will use as a base for all of our uh, experiments afterwards. So essentially we will build the infrastructure that we need to have in place in order to be able to uh, move on with all of the other uh, lab sheets that we have to do. So at the moment, what you have, if this whiteboard works still, so we have our Prometheus virtual machine. Okay, and this connects us to the outside world. So I will make this record full screen so that we have this on the video as well. Okay. So, at the moment, you should have your Prometheus virtual machine. This should connect you to the outside world with a network card called ENS33 and an IP address of 148.197.28 something. All right. So, for my computer, that something is 50. So, for your computers, it will be anything from 1 up to 48. Okay. So, this is your host. So, this runs on your physical computer, which is outside of it. It's called whatever, and it has an IP address of whatever this is, minus 50. Okay, so if you're working on computer 28.10, then you have a 28.60 for Prometheus. All right, so this is a network 28, which is bridged to your host computer and takes you out directly to the rest of the world. Okay, so you don't need to do any routing or anything. Uh, our router in the lab Columbus takes care of this. So from anything on subnet 28, you have direct access to the rest of the world. Now, inside this virtual machine, inside your Prometheus virtual machine, we will create a network of virtual machines. So um, the best way to draw this would be So, your host is here, and you have V Prometheus 0, V Prometheus 1, V Prometheus 2. Okay, now these connect with each other, like this. On your Prometheus VM, I'm going to use all my colors today, I love it. We will have two network cards that they are called VMNet. 0 and VMNet 1. These are virtual network cards. We will create them ourselves and I will show you how today. These will connect you to the virtual machines in this way. Now this virtual machine will also have a network card here and that will connect it onto VMNet 1. The name of this network card with regards to the operating system that's running inside this virtual machine will be called ENS33. Okay, default name for the first network card inside the virtualized environment on CentOS or in Red Hat. All right. This guy will need to have two network cards, one here, one here. And there will be ENS33 and ENS35, usually it gets allocated. And then this guy here will need to have another network card called ENS33. Now these network cards will all need to be allocated with IP addresses. So we need to sort out our network in such a way that you have IP addresses on everybody and then they can all communicate with each other and with the outside world. All right. Now to do this, we need to have various rules in place. So if we go back to the lab sheet itself, the network of the virtual machines that we will be creating is this. Okay, so in this diagram, this is our Prometheus. So essentially this is what in, on the whiteboard is surrounding everything. And then these are the virtual machines that run inside it. Okay, so these VMs will not run on the host, will not run on the physical computer itself. We do nothing on the physical computer anymore. Okay, these virtual machines will be virtual machines running inside your Prometheus virtual machine. So they are nested virtual machines. Okay, so 
these three guys will be running inside your Prometheus and they will need to have IP addresses so that we can make everything work together. The convention that we use, the subnets that we use in the lab, we have subnet 28 that connects us to the outside world and then we have subnets 30, 31 and 32 that we have access to. We are allowed to use them so that we can play around. The way that we have set this up in our network is the top branch of this diagram is our network 30, the bottom branch on the left side is network 31, and the bottom branch on the right hand side is network 32. Now, we need to have a way to allocate IP addresses to all of the network cards. They need to be public IP addresses, and we need to make sure that you don't all use the same IP address, or that not even one of these IP addresses is the same IP address to anybody else's. This matters because these will be public IP addresses and we will do routing later on. So all of these hosts, essentially by the end of the module, you should be able to ping anybody else's virtual machine in the class. Okay, so you'll be creating 48 computers times 50, 48 Prometheuses and then you have another three of each inside each of those Prometheus as well. So we're talking about a lot of computers and we need to make sure that they all have a unique IP address. We do this by following a guide. You will find this file called subnets, a2.net subnets PDF. Okay. And what we've done here is we've taken all of the hosts that we have in our class, starting from one and going all the way down to 48 with their names and everything else and we've given them a range of addresses that they can use for themselves okay so for example if you're sitting on farina your usable ip addresses are 30.1 and 30.2 if you're sitting on fittipaldi then your range of addresses is 30.13 to 30.14 there is a reason why we only have two ip addresses that we can use per host a reason and a happy coincidence, pretty much. The reason is the way that we had to split this network. So this network, network 30, starts in the beginning of a class C network at 30.0 and goes all the way to the end at 30.255. Okay. Now, 254 IP addresses available here to use for network cards in the system, plus the network address of 30.0 and a broadcast address of 30.255. We need to allocate slices to each of the computers in the lab. We have 48 computers in the lab. So we can't really divide 256 by 48 because unfortunately it doesn't work like that. And the, whatever we divide the subnet to, it needs to be a multiple of two. It needs to be a power of two, essentially. Okay, so this happens because the IP addresses that we see in decimal, essentially the computer sees in binary, and that works in a different way than we're used to in decimal. All right, so I'll explain this by using the subnet mask. I go back to my board, so can I? Yeah, I probably can. So, a subnet mask for a default class C network is this. Okay, 255, 255, 255, So this tells our computer or neighboring computers and everything else how big the network that we're working on actually is. All right. Now this is in decimal. We need to see it in binary so that we can see what the computer actually sees. In binary, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 digits per quadrant. All right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then I'll make this bigger. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. They are zeros and not one because it's zero. Translation from binary to decimal, yeah? One, two, eight, 
for this digit 64 32 16 8 4 2 1 what are these all powers of 2 2 to the 1 2 squared 2 cubed and so on and so forth that's why the limitation that whatever we split our subnet needs to be a power of 2 simply because of the binary form of the subnet mask and the IP addresses themselves. All right, so this means what for us? We have 48 computers in the lab, okay? So we need 48 slices of a class C network. How many slices we can have? We can have one slice, so we can have all of it. So we can have all 254. We can have two slices, so we can split it in half and have uh, 128 IP addresses each. We can have four slices, eight slices, 16 slices, 32 slices, 64 slices. 32 slices are not enough because we need 48 computers, therefore we need 48 slices. The nearest convenient split is 64. So on this table, we have our 48 and we have all of our spares. And so essentially we've taken the class C subnet and we split it into 64 slices. Okay, splitting it into 64 slices gives us four addresses per slice. Yes? How many digits do I need in binary in order to be able to have four addresses? <coughs> Two. Two. Zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. Yeah? So, out of all of these guys, I only need these. The rest of them, I can turn them into ones. So my default class is subnet mask that looked like ones, 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 zeros. Now the last part of it looks like this. If we add this up, if we convert this into decimal, okay, one to eight plus 64 and so on, gives us two, five, two. This gives us our new subnet mask. So each of our little slices of heaven in the class C network will have a subnet mask of 252 as the network length, as the, as the new subnet mask. This means that out of those four usable numbers that we have for each of our slices, we have to have a network address and a broadcast address. So we cannot use it as IP addresses because our computer and all of our networks around us need to know where the network begins and where it ends. This leaves us with two usable IP addresses per host. Okay, so if we use one of those slices, I'm going to use the last one because that's <coughs> the one that I use for my computer. We end up with this network. Ah, okay, we don't end up with this network diagram. I need to update it. Fine. Okay. So I will do it on the whiteboard. So let's go back to this. It's too early in the morning for me. So my network diagram. I have VMNet0 and VMNet1 on my host. So VMNet0 is going to be on 30 something. VMNet1 is going to be on 31 something. This computer up here is going to be on 30 something. This computer down here is going to be on 31 something. This IP address will be on 32 something. And so will this part as well. Okay, so same as the diagram in the lab sheet. We have some 30, 31, 32. What IP addresses can I give them? So I'm working on the last slice. So the last slice for me gives me a network address of 252, a broadcast address of 255, and usable IP addresses of 253 and 254. So these are the two addresses that I can use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my diagram and start allocating IP addresses. My network 30 will have a 30.253 because it's the first usable IP address that I have available to use for my slice. And then I need the second IP address, it's going to be 30.254. Okay, two usable IP addresses, 253, 254, 
I've allocated them. What about my subnets 31? The two networks, the two network cards that require two IP addresses on my subnet 31. Same. Nothing changes. It's the same range of IP addresses, different network. Yes? So it's going to be 31, 2, 5, 3, 31, 2, 5, 4. And of course, network 32 is going to be 32, 2, 5, 3, 32, 2, 5, 4. I'm really sorry about this diagram. I needed a bigger whiteboard for this. It's, I'm running out of space. Or maybe better planning it. I don't know. So the range of IP addresses that I use are the same. The networks that I use are different. Though, therefore, I can have one, two, three, four, five, six unique IP addresses to my computer, and so can all of you. So this way, no one will have the same IP address as anybody else in the network. Happy coincidence, the fact that we only have two IP addresses in our range of addresses or where we just smart and use three different subnets so that we make the six that we need. Okay, it is a happy coincidence actually, <laughs> because in the past we used to have half the computers and we used to split in a different subnet mask, but yes. Okay, so basically this is the way that we use in order to create our network diagram so that we can have all of our IP addresses, they are unique to ourselves, to our computers, and nobody else can have them. They are public IP addresses. We can route to them, we can do whatever we like, and we'll have a very complicated functioning network inside A2.net by December. Okay, now, I definitely, definitely want to see this network diagram with your own IP addresses in your logbooks before assessment. In fact, you should do this diagram and you should have this diagram in your logbooks before you come to class in order to do this lapsit tomorrow. Okay, so I'd like you to sit down. It's very easy because I'm a very nice guy. I have the template for this here. So it's a doc. It's exactly that blue diagram without IP addresses on it. So all you need to do is open this, put your IP addresses according to the subnets file in there, and copy and paste it onto your logbook. Okay, if you are unsure about it, show it to me and I'll tell you if it's correct or not. All right, but definitely have this diagram as a map when you come into the class because you'll need it. Because the logistics of creating all of this that we'll explain now are a bit complicated. So, let's go back to our lab sheet. We know the network diagram we need to have. So we need to create everything. So you have your Prometheus virtual machine. The first thing that you need to do is you need to install VMware player inside it. Okay, so to install VMware player, uh, you just go onto the website, download the version for Fedora Linux as they call it, which is the Red Hat version essentially, download it and then change the permissions if you need to and run it. Dot slash VMware 17 bundle, whatever the name is and so on. Once you install VMware Player on your Prometheus VM, you will then need to build your first virtual machine. You can do this in an easy, as easy way as possible. We just want it to be a GNOME desktop. Okay, 9 out of 10 times, VMware itself, as soon as it sees a CentOS DVD, it will do an unattended installation. So it will simply ask you for the username and password. You can provide the username of whatever you want. Ideally, I would like you to provide a username that's called do not use me. <laughs> as a reminder, yes. Give you the password. That password will be the same as the root password of the system. And then VM will simply build you a GNOME desktop. All right. Once it restarts, you will have one virtual machine called V Prometheus Zero, ideally. Okay. And you need to log into that virtual machine as user root with a password of localhost1. Before you do that, so make sure that it has, you know, the, the right amount of space and memory and all that. You will also need to clone it. Oh, what's wrong with me? Okay. So you create one virtual machine. We need to have three 
in total in our network. All right. The easiest way to clone this virtual machine is to go on to your Prometheus virtual machine, go into your root VMware folder, find the vprometheus0 folder in there, copy and paste next to it. Paste next to it again. It will create a folder called vprometheus0 copy and another one called vprometheus0 another copy. I'm not joking. This is what it actually called it. All right. And rename them vprometheus1, vprometheus2. Don't rename the files inside the folders, just the folders. If you begin renaming the files inside the folders, you will get stuck in a wonderful game of chasing file names and file name references inside the files. Okay, because if you change the name of the VMDK file of the virtual machine, you need to change the reference of that VMDK into the VMX file that holds the config for all the VM. So it's a proper nightmare. I've done it in the past and I regretted it within about 20 minutes. Okay, so rename the folders, leave the contents of the folders unchanged as they are. Once you rename those folders, you can then go back onto your VMware player and you can file, open a new virtual machine and open vprometheus1. As soon as you open vprometheus1, on your list of virtual machines on the left on VMware player, you will have two vprometheus0 virtual machines. Okay, you'll need to rename it. In fact, I think it's probably better if I show you. Yeah, so your virtual machine will be called whatever, and then you need to right click and go to settings. You could rename, but then you won't be sure if vprometheus0 is in fact, if the top vprometheus0 is in fact your new vprometheus1 or not. So the safest way to do it is go to settings. And then once you're in settings, you go to options and change the name from there. And it's better to change the name from there because down here you can see the location with the folder name of the virtual machine that you're working on. So for you, it will be slash root slash VMware, hopefully slash vprometheus1. So if you see vprometheus1 down here in the location, it needs to be vprometheus1 up here as well. Do the same for vprometheus2 as well, and you'll end up with those three virtual machines with different names in here. Now, once you have those virtual machines in place, we need to sort out their network cards. So your newly built vprometheus0 virtual machine at the moment has one network card and it's nutted. Okay, we don't want this. We want this to have one network card that connects onto vmnet1. In order to do this, we need to do a little trick. We need to customize the networking capabilities of VMware, of the virtual machines that we're working on. So I'll leave VMware running and I'll show you. So in a virtual machine, if we go to settings, and if we go to network adapter, <laughs> excellent. In Linux, you will have bridged, NAT, host only. Okay, these will be your three options. I'm very excited to see this custom because I think maybe they got the idea from us. I'm beginning to wonder now. So yes, so you have bridge, NAT, and host only. What you will do is you will hack the executable of this virtual machine, the VMX file, and you will make it contain a custom network card. In fact, you'll make it contain three custom network cards. And the way to do this will be to run a little script that's called fix vmnet dev. It's on Moodle, you download it, you go into your root VMware vprometheus0 folder, you open a terminal in there, you change the permissions of the fix vmnet dev script by its mod 777 fix vmnet dev, and you run it with dot slash fix vmnet dev. Once you do that, this little script will go around, it will find the vmx file of your vprometheus0 virtual machine. It will find the ethernet section, the network card section. It will delete the existing nutted network card and it will add three custom network cards. Okay, so this is what we want. We want to customize the networking capabilities of your virtual machine. There is one thing that you need to be very careful about with this script. This script 
has the wonderful property that it doesn't do spaces in file names. What do I care? You know, I didn't write the script. You're going to say now. However, you do care because when you were building V Prometheus 0, if you haven't named it V Prometheus 0 straight from the beginning, create a new virtual machine, make it CentOS 7, name it V Prometheus 0, those file names inside those root VMware folders will be CentOS space 7 space 64 bit dot VMX and you're screwed. Okay? The script will not run. You have your three virtual machines that you closed <laughs> so happily and now you have to delete them and make them again. And when I say delete and make them again, I mean install the operating system again because you need to rename the virtual machines correctly. Okay? So be very, very careful when you're installing V Prometheus 0, when you're creating the first virtual machine, name it V Prometheus 0 everywhere. Whatever it asks you for a computer name, V Prometheus 0. All right. If you don't, the file name will have spaces. You'll have to go back and waste another half an hour of your life doing it again. All right. So run this script. You get three custom network cards. And then you run the script in this guy and this guy as well. So they all have three custom network cards. Once you run it, you go on to the settings of the virtual machine. You go on to the Prometheus 0. And instead of three custom network cards, you delete the second and third one. You only leave <coughs> one. And then in the drop down menu, let's see if Windows does this in a similar way. I swear they got the idea from us. Mm. Anyway, so you get a drop down menu and you need to choose which VMNet your custom network card actually connects to. Okay, so for this guy, it needs to connect to VMNet 1. Sorry, VMNet 0. Okay, so Visual Machine 0 connects onto VMNet 0. Has one network card, custom VMNet 0. Virtual Machine 2, you will need to delete the third network card, keep only the first and the second. The first network card will connect to VMNet 1. The second network card will connect to VMNet 2. VMNet 2 doesn't exist here. I will show you how it gets created on the next script. Okay, but it gets created as a process in the system. So we don't start it up as a network card, give it IP addresses and all that. We just start it as a process on the system so that then this network card and this guy's network card can connect onto a something, onto a switch, essentially that allows them to communicate with each other. So two network cards for, for V Prometheus 1, and the first network card is gonna to connect to VMNet 1, the second one is gonna to connect to VMNet 2, and of course then one network card for the last VM connected to VMNet 2, and you're done. This will provide you with the physical connectivity between the virtual machines. How do we get those customized VMNet network cards? We have another script, that I need to find. Yes. And it's called VM underscore subnet. So this is a script. Uh, let's see if we can make this. This is a script that will essentially start VMNet 0, VMNet 1, and VMNet 2 and VMNet 3 onto the system as processes. So you will be able to see them. So this creates those virtual network cards onto your system as devices. And then we also configure and start up those network cards in our system. So before you run this script, if you type ifconfig, you will get your ENS33 network card, you will get the local, local, uh, local loopback interface, you will get a VIRBR network card, which is because of your virtualization capabilities of your operating system. And you will get a VMNet 1 and VMNet 8 network cards that correspond to uh, VMware's default uh, nothing and host only network cards in the system. We don't need that <coughs> VMNet 1 and that VMNet 8. So this script will get rid of them. And instead, it will create VMNet 0 and VMNet 1. It will create them and start them onto your system and it will give them whatever networking information you provide to them. So, if I was sitting on my computer, this VMNet IP will be my VMNet 0 IP address of 30.253.
the subnet mask for my machine will be 252 because 252 yeah and then my network and broadcast addresses my network address will be 252 and my broadcast address will be 255 why because a2.net subnets says so okay because these are the upper and lower boundaries of my network 252 for my network and 255 for my broadcast address okay exactly the same pattern gets repeated for vmnet1 so same ip addresses so these last parts will be the same between 30 and 31 you're just working on different subnets subnet 30 and subnet 31. once you configure this file you run it onto your system with dot slash vm subnet and then your if config onto prometheus will show you your ens33 will show you your loopback will show you your virbr and then it will show vmnet0 with that IP address and vmnet1 with that IP address. So you now created the network cards that exist here. You can connect to the virtual machines through them. And you've connected vmnet switches vmnet2 and 3. vmnet2 is used for these guys to communicate with each other. So you have the hardware infrastructure in place for your network. It is virtual. Okay. So this is a fake network card that we're creating. It's a virtual network card. For all intents and purposes, as the operating system sees it, it's an actual network card. Any data that goes from one network onto another and has to go through that network card, goes through that network card because the software that creates and runs this network card creates the TCP IP stack and all of the layers of the ISO 7 layer model that are necessary for the information to travel correctly from a physical to that virtual network card without any problems. So as far as your operating system is concerned, you open the box, you put a network card in it. Okay, no difference. So, you have the network cards in place, you have your virtual machines in place, now we need to give some IP addresses. So, uh, so we have allocated the addresses for 0 and 1, we need to make sure that we allocate these addresses here as well, yes? So, we need to start up our virtual machines, 0, 1, and 2. We need to go onto their network settings. We need to go onto the network cards and give them the correct information in there. So, that's the last part of the lab sheet. So, once you start up your virtual machines, you go to the network card for this guy, which is going to be called DNS33. Okay, it's not going to be called VMNet0. All right, VMNet0 is for VMware, for outside the virtual machine. For inside the operating system of that virtual machine, it's called ENS33. All right, the Linux operating system that's running on this doesn't know that it's running on a piece of software. It might as well be running on a physical computer. All right, so this guy needs an IP address. We're going to give it our second usable IP address from the subnet PDF file. It's going to ask for a subnet mask. We're going to give it 252. And it's going to ask for a default gateway as well. The rule for the default gateway is the next network card you see on your way towards the internet. So for this guy, the default gateway is this guy. Okay. So we'll see them on this machine. The next network card it says is this. So that's going to be its default gateway. It will also ask you for a DNS server. The DNS server will be always the same everywhere of 28251 until you get to the DNS lab sheet. Okay, so DNS server, the same everywhere. We then need to configure the first network card on virtual machine 1. 31254 for me, 252 as the subnet mask again, 253 as the default gateway. Okay, exactly the same as this. The only one that's a bit different is this one. So this guy is my 32253. So it's using the first usable IP address on my network. It's still going to have a subnet mask of 252. Okay. But the gateway in this case is going to be the next network card I see. So it's going to be this. It can also be this. But we want to simplify what we're doing. So we will follow the next network card rule. All right. And we'll stick with this as the gateway. You can experiment if you like. 
you can use whatever you like as a gateway and see what works and what not, things will get significantly more complicated later on when we do routing. So don't use this as the next gateway and be done with it. Okay. And then finally, we need to go to this virtual machine and it's on network 32 and the information will be the same as all in the previous network cards. All right. Once you set the IP addresses in the network cards themselves, your network is complete, the lab seat is finished, and the final test should be that you should be able to ping your neighboring VMs. You should be able to go from zero to the host and back, from one to the host and back, and from one to two and back. You shouldn't be able to ping further, okay, because Sorry? Routing. Yes, of course routing. We need routing in place to go through different networks. However, there is an anomaly in this and I want you to check it and test it. You should be able to ping from here onto here. There is very special reason for this. Should I tell you or should I let you investigate? Should I, should I trouble you with this or not? Eh, I'll tell you. VMware by default on Prometheus runs a bridge VMNet Zero network card. Okay, so other than the VMNet Zero that you've just created, there's another VMNet Zero <coughs> process on your system, which is a bridge. So that wonderful bridge bridges zero and one. So you're able to ping from here on here. If you want your network to be absolutely correct and perfect, PS minus CF pipe grab VMNet, find that VMNet zero bridge and kill it. Okay, so in order to get a full marks in this lab seat and my admiration, <laughs> you need to do this. Okay, so that it doesn't interfere with your testing and everything. All right, find the bridge on VMNet zero and kill the process for it. And you'll need to do this every time you start your computer. You will also need to run your VM subnet script every time you start your computer. Or you can automate these processes and make them run automatically. I won't tell you how. You need to figure it out. If you don't figure it all out soon enough, then I'll just tell you in a couple of weeks. Okay. So this is it. Very simple, really. <laughs> a little bit of networking in it, you know, a little bit of VMware playing around, some custom scripts, you know, it's, it's all fun and games. I expect this lab to take two weeks. I wouldn't be mad at you if it took you three weeks to do it, but you know, we have this week and next week in the lab. And then the week after that is consolidation week. So coming back from the consolidation <coughs> week, I would expect you all to have functioning, correct virtual networks. All right. If you get stuck in the two weeks in the lab that we have ahead of us, come during the consolidation week, come with friends, pay one of my lab assistants to help you. I don't care. Come in the lab, get it done. All right, because when we come back, we need to go on to routing from that on. Okay, any questions about all this? I will upload this immediately. You can watch it again before tomorrow if you like, or you can bring the video with you. Okay, thank you very much.